everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the Dice Hour. Today we're talking, or ranking, the Marvel United team decks that were released in the Multiverse Kickstarter for Marvel United. I love Marvel United, so I like to rank the things in it. Someday I'll rank all the characters, but that day is not here yet. Right now I'm going to rank the 38 different teams from lowest to highest, going from 38 to 1. Um, I like almost every team, so I don't think any of the teams are bad, necessarily. I don't, the bottom ones are meh. But the top ones I love. I love teams in general. I ranked them based on how bad their bad card was and how good the good cards were. One thing I did not really rank them on was the number of people on the team or necessarily who was on the team, although I thought about who was on the team and how they worked with the cards in general So when I did this. So this is just kind of a quick rundown of all 38 teams. Here we go. All right, at the bottom here, we have the New Avengers. And in fact, it even says not exactly a cohesive team. Although I don't think their negative is bad. The reason I have them ranked lower is because there's, their, their good cards aren't that good. Here they can stun henchmen. Of course, if you're not fighting henchmen, that's not as useful. Here they can take two attack tokens and then you're KO'd. I don't love that. And then this is a nonsense card. All new, all different uh, New Avengers and... The, for the rest of the game, heroes take their turns in a counterclockwise order. I mean, I like that the bottom of it's wild, but what on earth? All right, well, that's the new Avengers. Now we have the United Heroes. Now, of course, this one was going to be on the bottom because this is simply just, you know, any hero. So this is obviously going to be one of the weaker decks. They're an impromptu team. They ignore a symbol at the bottom of the previous hero card. That's a pretty bad negative thing. And then the, the other stuff's not bad. Each other hero, it gives you something good, and then it gives you other heroes to do specific things with a wild. And this each hero gains a token of their choice. But then discard your cards and draw the number one. That's kind of very, very, it's just very, I don't know, uh, disruptive. So I don't know. That's why these guys are farther down on the bottom. Then we got my favorite team in my heart, because I love these guys in the comics, the X-Factor team. And their negative card is Project Wide Awake. As long as it's in their team display, they ignore an action card. That's basically the same as the last one. And here this says, as long as this card's face up, if anyone's KO'd, you can move one. Okay, well, and if you're KO'd, you can do this. If you're KO'd, you can do that. I don't care about those. Here you can pick someone and they draw three or gain a wild token. That's not so bad, but that other KO stuff, just not as handy. Then we have another team that I really enjoyed, the Red Hulk's Thunderbolts. And here, heroes have to flip the card, they play that turn face down. That's such a bad card. And because of that, the extreme violence of doing extra damage doesn't seem to overcome that. This is all about fighting. I mean, there's a lot of fighting here. Here you... Do actions equals the number of the heroes. That's pretty cool. And here, do actions equal the number of heroes. I like that. And here you can turn other icons into fighting. But it's just so specifically fighting. Which is cool, but what if you're not in a fighting mood? So that's Red Hulk's Thunderbolts. Then we have the Illuminati. I hate that, that this team. As long as this one's in the display, heroes can't use effects that would give action tokens or to pull to other heroes or make other heroes draw cards. Okay, and this card can't be played in the storyline. So this is always here. For this very fact alone, I don't like this team as much because they just can't really work with each other. Although you can let people search for cards and put it at the top, unless that's out. Um, and there's wilds. And here you can look at the top two cards. This doesn't have any icons here, but you can pick a card with a special effect belonging to a member that's someone who's not in play. And then replace this card with that one. You can use that card special effect. That's kind of cool. Um, but you can't use the action symbols at the bottom. So I don't know how strong that one would be, actually. Then after the Illuminati, we have Uncanny X-Force. Uncanny X-Force. They um, are tormented by their deeds. As long as it's in the display, if they start with the crisis tokens, they have to play their hero card randomly, then get rid of one. Not so bad if you don't have any crisis tokens, except your cards all give you crisis tokens, or several of them do. And these also let you get rid of icons. Choose a location. Anyone can move this evacuate card. That's pretty strong, and I like that one. Then we have the Savage Avengers. 
Their negative thing is, as long as this card is in the team display, heroes must cover with a crisis token, a symbol at the bottom of the card they play. So you're canceling one symbol from each one. That's pretty terrible. But everyone who's alone in their location, this one encourages you to kind of split up and you get free actions, which could be really powerful. Not to mention, they're all moves at the bottom. So I kind of like the Savage Avengers for that, even though it's kind of the opposite of what a team should be. Now we'll take a look at Shield. Shield, as long as this, as long as this card is in the team display, heroes can't choose a card from the team display other than this one. So this kind of just slows you down one round, which isn't too bad. But here, other heroes can move immediately, which isn't bad. This where you can attack at each location with at least one civilian, that's a really cool card. That's a neat card, I enjoy it. And then heroes can use action tokens as well. Of course, you have to have the action tokens for that to work out. Then we have X-Force. X-Force, um, as long as this card's in a team display, heroes cannot use non-mandatory end of turn effects of locations. Now, since you don't get locations till sometimes more than halfway through a game, it seems, this one doesn't feel as negative, and their cards are fine. Here, the first time you defeat a thug, you can discard another thug. Um, anyone who's about to take damage can immediately attack. I like that one. Here, you can turn attacks into heroics and they put their wilds on the bottom, and that's what makes that one more useful. All right, then after that, we have the Dark Avengers. The Dark Avengers, uh, as long as this card is a display, anytime someone does damage to somebody, they must discard a civilian. In most scenarios, that's not too terrible, but then these guys are about killing other people, no mercy, pull heroes towards you and immediately do wilds. During the next villain turn, each hero is about to take damage, can immediately attack in their location. So not so, not so shabby. We have the champions. They are the champions of the world. Here, henchmen and villains ignore one damage each hero turn. That's terrible. I don't like that at all. Um, ignoring damage doesn't affect you at the beginning of the game or if there's no henchmen, but it will affect you at some point. But then letting other people rescue, other people move, other people attack thugs, this is the very definition of a heroic team. Then we have the Marvel Knights. The Marvel Knights, as long as this is in a display, heroes entering a location with one or more other heroes, discard an action token or take a damage. Again, this is one of the worst b b bad cards, I think. I don't like this one at all. But if you stay alone, and again, it's another one of those teams that works alone, which again means why are you a team? But anyhow, um, alone gets tokens or do, they do these move and attacks. This is pretty solid, which raises them above the other loner team. The next team is one of the weirdest teams, the Sword Bears of Krakoa. Because here you're like using Magic or Dark Child, Storm or Storm with Mohawk or Wolverine. You pick one of these characters. They don't have the stipulation on a lot of the other teams. Um, you can have Iceman and Iceman First Class together, for example. And then you remove two cards. What's weird about this team is these cards are awesome, but they only work on someone's specific turn. So Storm, and this also has the or. It's a move or attack. But when she does move, she can then attack with Storm. So each of them has a specific card to that person. Magic or Dark Child. And as long as it's there, you can swap a card from your hand with one of your Soul Sword cards and then put it there. So if you like specificity in teams, you're going to really like this one. Because these guys, you're going to pick cards that match the heroes that you have on your team. And for that matter, that this may be some people's favorite team. Gen X. This team is too small, for my opinion. This is one of the ones I complain about. Like, where's Blink? Why is Blink not on this team? But anyhow, Gen X here, as long as it's in the team display, when a hero plays a hero card with special effects, they take one damage at the end of their turn. What? In Gen X, they all have lots of cards like that. Here, when you do two or more actions in a single turn, you get that token. Great card. No icons. Here, someone else can draw action token, can discard an action token to draw cards. Of course, you need action tokens for that to happen. But I would actually rank this team lower, but these two cards, the gateway cards, pick a location. Everyone there can move to another location. That's pretty awesome. Also, considering there's wilds on the bottom. All right. The first of the two teams in the Civil War, we have Team Iron Man. So, obviously, I like the Captain America team a little better. 
Here, heroes starting with locations one or more civilians must forfeit an attack. They're trying to not hurt civilians. If you defeat thugs, you get extra attack. You get a double attack against a single target. And if you enter a location with a villain or henchman, deal a damage to them and reveal. So they're kind of an attacky team, but hampered by civilians. Then we have the X-Men, one of the largest teams here. Uh, so here, mankind has always feared what it doesn't understand. So if you end your turn in location with civilians, you must discard a card, which is not great because almost every location will have civilians in it. But here you, you can pick a hero. Everyone moves to that hero and then do uh, actions equal to the number of heroes there. This is a wild, helps you get rid of crisis tokens. Here you get a move token. And then if you have two or more hero cards, special effects in the storyline, get a wild token. Um, yes, please. With X-Men, that's great. And there's two of those cards. Well, they're slightly different. Wait, did I say two? Three. So you can see these teams. We are definitely getting better teams here. Oh, it's the Captain America Secret Avengers um, team. They, if they're, you can't rescue civilians as long as there's thugs in that location. I think that's actually slightly worse maybe than the Iron Man team, but I like these cards better. If you rescue civilians, you're heroic. If there's, if there's no civilians, you can do a double attack there. You'll notice they have the oars at the bottom of these cards too. As long as this card's face up, if a villain ends with him, they move to an adjacent location. When they do an attack, flip this card. So it's kind of a good card until you attack. I don't know. I find this one interesting, and it's a very thematic team. Then we have the Defenders. Splitting up. As long as it's there, when a hero ends their turn to location with other heroes, draw a master plan card, add it face down in the storyline. This is horrible. Um, so this is a team that has a bad special effect, but they have good ones here. Double hits on henchmen, which is not great, but you have three of them, so there's a lot of them. But I love these magical defenses. These double your heroic attack actions. That's just fantastic, and I like it a lot, the defenders. Next, we have the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, the biggest idiots in the galaxy. They can't place the last token on incomplete mission cards. Why? <laughs> you, this is one, as soon as it shows up, you have to get rid of it, right? You, you need to finish mission cards. Unless it shows up later in the game, then you do not care. So this one could be, if, if it doesn't show up on like the first two cards, you might get some missions done and then not care if this shows up. Here, wherever you've one or more heroes, this is, a, this is the opposite of the loner teams. People together, do actions. Then specific stuff here. So keep this in mind because you don't have to have the Drax in, but this specifically does an attack in Draxes and an attack in Rockets, otherwise one a hero attacks. So it's better if you play with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Same thing with if Starlord and Gamora in the same action, double heroic. And then, of course, I love cards like this. Use the special effect of another hero's face-up card. That's always a cool, fun thing to do, especially if someone has an awesome special card. Another spacefaring team, the Asgardians and allies. Um, these guys, their negative thing is Ragnarok has come. Heroes have discard an action token or a card from their hand at the end of their turn. Not a great card, but you can rearrange the master plan, pick a location, another one of those evacuation cards. Everyone can move to another one. Here, there's no icons in the bottom, but this heroic or attack in three different locations can be a, a life-saving card. Here, you use the symbols at the bottom of the two previous cards. I love this card, Lady Sif. And then at the end of the next villain turn, if you take damage but you weren't KO'd, you draw a card. So, some really nice cards. I enjoy this team. The Avengers, when they're not split up into the Civil War. Here, government ties. You can't do the same action more than once during a turn. I don't like that. I want to do the same action more than once. But, we have Avengers Assemble, which you pick a hero. Everyone moves toward that hero. And then you do actions as the number of heroes there. Mm, 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 mm. Great. If it has a BAM effect, the latest master plan, which they almost always do, you get an extra attack. Pick a hero, you do the number of damage in your location equal to three, minus the number of cards in their hand. So if you're getting beat down, this is a good one. You just let it sit there in that team thing and play it when you need it. And then if you choose to discard a card, you get a heroic token, which if you, this is a good one to get at the beginning of the game. Next, we have Midnight Suns. That's right, video game land. Um, here, as long as this card is in display, if you start with two or more cards in your hand, you skip your draw card step. So not great. 
You can get rid of that one, though. Here, move all heroes to a single location. Another evac card with a wild. Everyone can move to a location of choice. That's even better. That card is amazing. A wild in each location with one or more heroes. What? Here it is an attack in each location with one or more heroes. And a and a a heroic action in each location with one or more heroes. These are great cards. This is why the Midnight Suns are higher up on my listing. Next we have Alpha Flight. Yeah, stinking Alpha Flight. I don't love the Alpha Flight characters that much. They're lower on my rankings, but hey, you can put them together as a team and they're better. Can't do the same action more than once. We've already seen that. But Another hero can immediately do a heroic action. You can give one of your tokens to them. If you have tokens, that's worth it. But they have the evac card with the Omni Jet. Choose a hero, search your deck for any card, put it at the top. And it's a wild. And you have two of these. So that makes this team pretty solid. All right, now we're jumping to the young adventures. Here are heroes that are moved back to the hero starting location. Yeah, no, you're just moved. I'm sorry, you're moved back to the starting location. That's a weird one. It can be good, but it's usually not great. Um, at the beginning, I don't know if I care, but after a while, it's going to start becoming really annoying. This one is neat. You can turn up the three face-down hero cards in the storyline face-up, so that's great, especially if you fight someone who turns them down. Stunning people is awesome. So I like that. Here you can exchange tokens, and anyone who does that gets a wild token. Now that's fantastic. And the fact that there's two of these is terrific. Also, if you're KO'd during the next villain turn, gets a token. So if you think you're about to be KO'd, this is a great card to play. Spider Army. I'm surprised there's not more teams with the Spider-Man on them, but hey, we'll take what we can get. The Spider-Man is hunted. Heroes being dealt damage by villains. Remove cards from the game instead of discarding the bottom of the deck. That's so terrible that you must flip it over immediately. But... Then we have cool cards like this. As long as it's face up, if you're KO'd, you remove them from the game and you pick a new person. They come in and they get a wild token. I don't know why I like that. That's just kind of fun. Here, reveal the top two cards of all decks. That's crazy powerful. And there's two of these. And then, uh, until the next villain turn, heroes can use move actions to move to any location. So I like the Spider Army, obviously, a lot. Force Works. Here, this is a team in which, well, I don't really like the team themselves here, like in the comic or anything, but heroes can't gain or exchange action tokens, not bad, but here you can use the end of turn effect of the location if there's no threat card there immediately. That's a great end game card. Here, give everyone a token of their choice, then we have some attacks against a single target as long as there's one more hero, and every hero can double move. I just think that's cool. Then we have the Deadpool team up. Deadpool has Bob and Cable and Deadpool. As long as it's in the display, heroes cannot gain action tokens. Meh. But hey, if you defeat two or more people, you get an action token. If you clear a threat card this turn, gain a wild token. As long as this card's face up, each time mission's complete, everyone gets a wild token. If you rescue two or more civilians, get a heroic token. As long as this is face up, everyone gets a wild token. Oh, I think there was two of those. You know what? That's fantastic. So if that bad card comes up, immediately turn it face down because it's worth it. Then we have the West Coast Adventures. Lack of organization. You don't benefit from the previous hero card in the storyline. Uh, no one likes that piece of garbage, but the good cards work for them. Choose any location. Move everyone there. So it doesn't, it's other than the hero starting and villain, but still, that could be super great. I mean, if it... If it the villain's current location would be even better, but I'll, we'll take what we can get. Give a token to two heroes in the same location. We got two of these. And one hero of your choice can turn all their equipment cards face up. Can you say Hawkeye? Because I can. All right, it's time for the top 10 teams. Here we go. The new mutants. As long as this is in the team display, if you start your turn in the same location, other heroes discard your hand and draw back the same number of cards. It doesn't KO them. So that's bad, slightly, but it's more chaotic than bad, so it doesn't bother me as much. Here, if there's other heroes, distribute any combination of tokens. Okay, that's great. Heroes in location with other heroes, draw a card. If you have less than three cards, heroes in location with other heroes, ignore the first damage. Here, if you do that in each location with two or more heroes, add a stun villain, but 
Keep your guys together in this team, and you're going to do amazing. All right, a new team that has shown up. The Inhumans have shown up in the multiverse, and I like them without their team, with their team. Oh, my word. Here, heroes need an extra heroic thing to rescue civilians. That's kind of crazy bad in the beginning. If it doesn't come up in the beginning, you're okay. But, uh, yeah, I just get rid of that one quickly. But here, the Terrigen Mist. So if you haven't played with the Inhumans yet, they have six tokens that are face down. For them, uh, when you, you flip them up and they're, you know, a random good thing, a move, an attack, whatever. Um, but the, there's two that are blank. This turns them into wild, which is awesome. Here you can peek at two of those missed tokens and then swap them. You have two of those. Here you put two random discarded ones back into play. And this is just a double wild. How can I not like this team? I already like the Inhumans. Next we have Excalibur. Excalibur has Jealousy. Oh, I missed the Excalibur comics. Jealousy, as long as this card is face up, if you start your turn location with another hero, you ignore an action symbol. Don't love that, but what I do love are the cards. These let you ignore damage from the villains. Here, this one's so great. You can pick a, a random card from someone else's hand if an action, and name an action symbol. If it's at the bottom of that card, you gain three of that type. You can definitely manipulate that to get three action tokens. But these reality hoppers, which are wilds, let you use an end of turn effect of your location, even if it's covered by a threat card, that's awesome. Next, we have an alternate defenders team, Manhattan. This is the, the uh, well, the, the Netflix ones. They're double, they're just four people on the team. As long as this card's face up, if you start your turn in location with one or more heroes, you forfeit an action on your turn. Oh, that's a pain in the neck. Turn that over as soon as you can. But this, again, is specific. Iron Man, Luke Cage in the same location, double attack. Iron Fist and Daredevil in the same location, attack heroic. Jessica Jones, Daredevil, they both ignore damage. Luke Cage and Daredevil, double heroic. Iron Fist and Jessica Jones, draw a card. Luke Cage and Jessica Jones, each gain a free token. I don't know why I like that. It's fun, if you especially want to play with these four characters. Then we have the Wakandans. Here, isolation. Heroes can only damage enemies or rescue things in their starting location. So again, this is one of those cards that's so bad when you get it, you've got to flip it over. Bought a wild on the bottom, and then you also get a wild, or, every, or two heroes draw a card each. And there's two of those. There's also one for attacking. There's also one for this. These cards are amazing. They're so good. The Wakandans are great. But there's still five teams I like better. Resistance against Apocalypse. When this is in a team location, remove the last place token from an incomplete mission of your choice. So that's, that's pretty terrible. I mean, that's actually horrifically bad. But... The good cards, you gain a token if it's not on the pr previous hero card. So you can just pick that to make sure it happens. So there's a couple of those. Here, if this card's face up, when a hero's KO'd, turn it face down and distribute two wild tokens from the pool among the heroes. So this is great. Someone's going to be KO'd probably. I'll take the free wilds just to make me feel better. Here, if the rescue civilians is not yet completed, you can attack for H3 on it. So you can wait and use this and get two on it, a double attack and a move. I just like this team. Then we have A-Force. A-Force, so many zombies. When this card is revealed, you're going to add a thug to every location. As long as it's there, if you end your turn with thugs, you take a damage. So again, you got to kind of get rid of this one. But come on, do double an extra two damage to a villain. Move to any location, move to any location, move to any location. That alone, move anywhere and do heroic, makes me love this team. And pick a location, every hero there gets a token. That's a fantastic card. Then we jump to the Infinity Watch. So the Infinity Watch here, so this is a weird one. As long as it's in a team display, all special effects and hero cards and other team cards are treated as blank. When played in this storyline, accelerate the next villain turn by one card. What? That's, that's the worst bad car card in the game of all the team cards, but then we look at the good cards. As long as this is face up, you get a free move on your turn. Each hero can swap a card with one of their face up cards in the storyline, and it's wild. If this card's face up, they're not KO'd, but you draw cards, you have three in your hands, then we flip it face down. These are all the stones, if you haven't noticed. Clear a threat in your location. Do not add a threat token to the clear threats mission. I mean, just getting rid of a threat, who cares, you know? 
and then delay the next villain turn by one card. And you'll notice the bottoms, there's wilds. This is a crazy powerful team. It's just that their bad card is so bad. Oh, and I forgot the power stone. <laughs> double attack, double attack. Come on. Gotta love this team. All right, my number two and number one were hard to switch between, uh, pick between, but number two is the Star Jammers. The Star Jammers, if you end your turn with any villains, henchmen, or villains, discard an action token or take a damage. Not great. But you don't realize, folks, how powerful the Star Jammers are by themselves. Then you add these cards. So if the previous hero card has Star Jam in its name, Free Wild, and there's two of those, three of those. Do one damage to each henchman and locations one or more heroes. Fantastic. Rescue a civilian in each location with one or more heroes. Wow, I love the Star Jammers. But not as much, my number one, as the Fantastic Four. So the Fantastic Four, their bad card is, as long as it's their action cards can't be added to the Fantastic Four cards. You have to get rid of that card. Because the Fantastic Four has this card that you put action tokens on, and then cards will let you activate each of those. But hey... Here, I could do an action of the same type as a token on that card or search for a teamwork card, which lets you put those on that card. I love that. And there are three of these. That card will fill up. Here, you can move all other heroes to your location, and it's a wild. And here, you can replace an action token on the Fantastic Card 4 card with a wild token. That's amazing. I really like the Fantastic Four, and they're my number one. Well, there you go. My number one and two they could switch switched really easily. They're both really good teams. But what's your favorite team if you played these? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see my full review of the Marvel United teams, I've done that in a separate video. But anyway, thanks for watching another ranking video here. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another video on the Dice Tower. Hey, do you want to know what's going on with Dice Tower? Do you want to know about our events, our cruises, special things that we're going to do live during the Dice Tower, subscribe to Dice Tower Digest. Go to DiceTowerDigest.com. It's a newsletter that we send out bi-weekly. We won't use your email for anything else. This is just to get you some information about the Dice Tower so you'll be up to date. Thanks for watching.